Welcome to PCR London Valves 2024. My name is Jonathan Burham. I'm a cardiologist from London. It's a great pleasure to be joined by Tobias Kister, a cardiologist from Leipzig, and um, Miriam Wilde, a cardiologist from Freiburg. We're here today to discuss some of the real-world evidence surrounding transcatheter edge, edge repair uh, that's currently become available. And it's a great pleasure to go over to Tobias first to talk through the results from the tri-class registry. So yes. Bias, talk me through your main, uh, main summary from, from this important real-world registry. TriClasp is um, a multi-center, single-arm, a prospective um, European post-market study, which enrolled 300 patients, and now we have the follow-up data of 232 patients. And um, what we see, first and foremost, is a very low rate of major adverse events at the one year. And um, another striking number is um, the heart failure hospitalization analyzed was reduced by 72%. Um, concerning uh, the efficacy of the procedure, um, just as a recap, we see 87% who achieved a moderate or less TR. And what we see at one year is that it's a durable um, result, so this um, reduction is sustained. If you uh, have a look at the clinical and um, the quality of life outcomes, uh, we see once again, um, a significant um, improvement in KCCQ in uh, six minute walk distance and uh, the new hair class is improved. So just in short, we see a safe and effective um, procedure at one year. So really encouraging results showing a very low risk, safe treatment for these patients. Definitely. And Miriam, the PACE registry is a real world registry of over a thousand patients. What does that tell us about treatment of uh, tear with the Pascal system? Yeah, so our, our idea was to complement the data that is generated by industry studies, by randomized controlled trials, with a real-world patient cohort that is a real all-comers cohort. So we didn't apply any inclusion or exclusion criteria. We had 16 um, heart valve centers throughout Europe that were participating, and that included all consecutive patients undergoing the procedure with the system. Um, from the commercial approval up to November 2023. So we have a very large and contemporary cohort that we could analyze. And we found that patients in this cohort were severely symptomatic with a very high risk profile, very high symptomatic burden and um, clinically very advanced. And also on an anatomical level, echocardiographic characteristics were very advanced with RV dilation, um, huge um, co-optation gaps in a number of patients, and CIED lead present in almost one third of the patients. So it really differs from the data that we already had on tricuspid tier. And we could actually confirm the great safety profile of the procedure, even in this high risk po patient population. And um, we had a reduction of TR in these experienced centers that were participating um, of TR to moderate or less in almost 90% of the patients. And we even saw a learning curve during the project because half of the patients were treated with the first generation and half of the patients with the Pascal Precision. And so we analyzed the two groups, but mainly finding what we believe is the learning curve, even in the experienced side. So the um, success rate goes up to um, 92% um, in these patients. And looking closer at this um, aspect of experience, um, we were lucky that we had a mean number of patients included per side of over 60. And so we decided to define a cutoff of the median patients per side per year and that was 21. So we did an analysis which could not have been performed before because um, nobody had these huge numbers. And so we looked at pa um, the patients that were treated at lower and higher experience centers. And even among all these experienced centers, we find that there is still a difference um, with the case load that you have um, per year with the system. And we found that the as well the intra-procedural success, but also clinical success at 30 days, one year, were significantly better in these highly experienced centers. And the SLDA rate, which was low throughout uh, the study, was even lower within, um, with the experienced sites. So I think it's very, um, uh, it's very important data that can make us really confident to also treat these clinically advanced and anatomically advanced patients. No, it's fascinating data, and I think the comment about volume and experience is really crucial and important. 
Coming back to you, Tobias, what features of the Pascal system do you particularly appreciate? What, what does our device design do you like most about using the system? But to pick one, so I probably go for the elongation. Offers the, the opportunity um, to, to uh, address more difficult anatomies. So you can address pathologies within the commissures without having the, the risk of getting entangled there. And uh, also, if you have this elongated state of the device, it, the profile becomes even, um, even lower. So if you um, want to place a device pretty close to the first one, you can even cross the valve um, in this elongated way. And um, this offers a very safe um, possibility to place the devices even in challenging anatomies. Yeah, so flexibility and safety are really two key components of the system and that elongation as you say is very 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 useful. Miriam mm. for you what, what advantages do you see of using Pascal? Yeah so I think another um, safety point um, which is reassuring for the interventionalist is that um, especially in the tricuspid valve where you have this thin um, tissue of the leaflets you have a quite atraumatic uh, grasping of the leaflets and you can feel safe to, to regrasp, to optimize the results, to um, open again and um, make an, another attempt. And that's actually something that I observed because we were looking at all the echo images from all the patients ourselves. So we did the centralized analysis. So I saw hundreds of procedural echoes now for, from different centers. And it's something that I observed actually that um, many operators felt safe to um, to regrasp, to optimize the result, to reposition even, and um, that's something that the system offers. And of course, the independent grasping, which is very safe, so you can possibly even bridge larger coaptation gaps. So absolutely safe, atraumatic grasping of the leaflets, and a sort of very flexible system are all huge advantages. So Tobias, what's the impact on the clinical practice of these uh, important clinical findings? With the safety numbers in my mind, I go very confident to the heart team discussions, I think. So we can effective um, treat even the older and sicker patients. And um, to be a little bit more provocative, maybe it's more an argumentation, why shouldn't we um, treat the, uh, the older patients with um, symptomatic TR and not if? And the same question to you, Miriam. How, does, how will this impact your clinical practice? Yeah, I completely agree that the high safety profile and the um, very good results that we can achieve today in the experienced sites are really reassuring for us. And what I think is the next step now is to take away these results and bring them into the world, you know, to um, get into the discussion with the GPs, with the cardiologists that are referring patients, because there is still a lot of skepticism around the topic. Um, and so I, I believe that this data um, gives us the backup to go into this conversations and to see the patients earlier for evaluation and possible treatment. I agree. Thank you very much. So we've had a really good discussion about the real world evidence modern real-world evidence for treating tricuspid patients with the Pascal Precision System. We've had some excellent discussions of the data to date. It's a very safe, very effective treatment with really fantastic real-world outcomes. So I'd like to say thank you to you, Tobias, and you, uh, Miriam, for your time this morning. Thank you.